Hey traders, it's Ryan from the Private Banker. I'm just going to do a, um, just a short video um, around data. I mean, this um, this question drove me insane for for years. Um, I'm not even kidding here. Um, just the whole way that the futures data is spliced together drove me crazy. Um, obviously, I didn't know what the right levels were, what the right prices were. I mean, with all the different ways you can adjust data. I mean, if we just take a quick look at Sierra charts here. Um, it's a very customizable platform and um, you can do quite a lot with it I mean but so here's how you you can splice the, the contract data together so I mean, you can just have a none so you just can use the plain contract so the front contract that you're using all you're going to basically see is the um, is the starting price and stopping price um, from that contract start um, to the rollover pretty much but you're, all you're going to see is the volume coming in and obviously sl and slowly increasing as the contract goes then you've got the continuous futures um, contract uh, date rule so this is going to be a, a, a forward um, just this is going to be a continuous contract you're not going to see any splice in data adjustment which will I go into shortly um, which is what I'm using currently and um, and this is a date rollover so I mean the old school traders the old school pit traders and the old school traders will use this date rule. I mean from experience and from um, from talking to people and seeing what they do um, this is what the professional old school guys use they use this because it's just the way that they did things back in the day and obviously habits become habits that they use continuously and that evolves into um, it's devolves with traders and obviously if you go to a priority trading desk or you go to an investment bank or you go to a wealth management firm or you go to wherever it doesn't matter you go get professionally trained to trade I mean you're gonna get trained by the professionals that have been doing it for a long time and when you're sitting next to some guy that's been doing it for 40 years I mean this is probably what he would use and this is what you will end up using um, I've seen a lot of sort of retail sort of educators and new people in the markets using the volume based rollover. That's great. Um, I'm leaning that way, was leaning that way. I don't still know. There is no wrong or right way. It's a personal preference. So the volume based rollover would be, sorry, the date rolled over would be, um, it's, it gets quite, quite complicated. I mean, you can go into, um, so I'll show you, you can go into the contract specifications. So if you go to here and you go to um, apply, uh, edit um, global settings, oh, I might have screwed. No. Um, so if you go to edit global settings and you go to rollover, so it'll tell you number of business business days before the rollover of the calendar days. So the finish of crude oil, so um, number of business days um, in the week, I think that is, and business days calendar before the contract month. I'm not going to go into detail, I don't fully, I can't remember exactly, I mean I did go into all this, but... Um, it's just the way that they're, um, it's, it, it's programmed to roll, so it would normally be... Um, like for for instance, crude oil um, date roll is always um, around. So this month's going to be the seventeenth. I mean, it's always the the Thursday, Friday before um, into the third week of the month, I believe. Um, for that's for, that's for crude oil. But obviously, um, equities roll over rolls over on a quarterly basis. But anyway, I'm going on a tangent here. It doesn't matter. You don't have to understand it. But it's just the date rollover. So then you have got the volume based rollover, continuous contract again. Um, so the continuous contract will be um, so just quickly explain this um, so this is a continuous contract here so the price closed um, on the um, so we're using the volume based rollover just double check now we're using the date rule for this so I'd use a date rule uh, but from a volume based rollover uh, I'm just getting I don't want to confuse people here so this, this stick with the date rule so the date rule is going to be um, as I said, the last Friday of the third month um, on crude, as I believe, and um, so for here it was uh, the 19th. I'm just going to double check that against. Uh, so in March, so Thursday was the was the rollover. So maybe it's the the what the, the first day before the weekend. So that was the 19th, <clears throat> and um, so we rolled over on this date. So it cuts off the contract price from the previous contract, and it rolls straight over to the new contract, leaving that gap in place there's no splicing in the data so that contract closed at 43.93 and then this new contract started trading higher at 46.01 
um, on the rollover to the to the next contract. So from the the March to the April contract, the March eight, uh, contract closed on this day at forty three ninety three. The next day, when we we rolled over to the the, the front contract, um, it was it was trading at forty six dollars a barrel. So you can see that that was the spread um, on on that adjustment, and um, and we didn't adjust it. It just continuously it just rolled over. So the the low that we got put on that we got that we put in the March contract forty two oh one physically got made in March of 42.01 and it wasn't adjusted um, so we'll go into this again in a minute because what will happen is is the the, the back adjusted contract um, so again this would be the rollover so rollover it was done on the 18th of uh, of of February so I'm just going to double check what day that was in February so the 18th of February happened to be so we roll over so the 19th is a Thursday so again it's the 19th 19th on the on the date rollover and um, so anyway so you can see that this contract obviously opened higher again and um, and it didn't get spliced so the higher that got made was the actual real higher that got made in that contract it's not back adjusted to the higher that was made in the in in the front months etc so again pushing forward so with the that's the date rollover rule the volume rollover is going to be obviously um, obvious so as soon as um, the front month. Um, so this month, as soon as the the June contract takes over the, so just double check this. Which we're trading. So make sure I don't want to give out wrong information. So at the minute we're trading the the May contract. So as soon as the March contract starts to um, show a higher volume than than the. Um, the than the March contract, then we see the the rollover. So whoever's tra whoever's trading the most contracts on the month, that then we see the rollover um, occur. Then so that's if you obviously if you choose the um, the, the the volume or the date. I mean these two they end up being pretty similar anyway. Um, the way that the contracts roll, they're normally very similar, if not a day apart, two days apart. It doesn't really matter, but they're they're very similar. Um, and then we go to the continuous futures back adjusted. So the back adjusted I'll show you something I'll show you what would happen on the back adjusted contract so what will happen is this price is here get this right Might as well just take a screenshot of the whole thing, so bear with me. So what will happen is it will get spliced together, they will, it doesn't leave a gap. So what will most probably happen is, is that this will get moved up like this. And it will get spliced together. I'm, I'm pretty sure that it's the... It's the back adjusted contract gets spliced into the front uh, contract, and it's not the the front that gets spliced into the back. I mean, I'm not 100% sure here. I'm just trying to explain the logic behind the way that the different data is is spliced together. So I'm not 100% sure if if it's that way around or the other way around. But the point being is, is I'm sure, I'm pretty sure like this it works this way because this new low gets put in lower. So. Um, it gets moved. So physically, we put in the low down here. So anybody who's trading the spot prices um, on CDFs or on the spot, they see this physical low put in here. But then when you're using the back adjusted contract, because you're seeing physical inventory in the market, that low got put in at a different price. So on the back adjusted contract, you're seeing physical inventory actually in the market now. So what has happened is on the rollover, obviously people have rolled over their contracts and they've been trading the front contracts in the, in the spread in the front month. So I could be now, obviously, I'm looking for shorts and crude. So instead of rolling my position over and trading um, the March contract now, I could be front running the June contract and selling the June contract ready for next month. So my f I'm physically selling the June contract up here now. And obviously when the, the, the contracts roll, then it would be a different price to what we was actually trading this month. But physically, th this month we put in a low of, say, 42, but then I might have been buying the 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 previous the uh, the front contract at this price, but obviously with the way that the the contracts get rolled, then it's it's it's, it's a different price because obviously I mean look if you look now I mean we're trading fifty two dollars a barrel, 
but then we're trading 5383 on the on the front month so let me just double check this is correct as well so this is wrong uh, m5 no gcl gcl m5 is the june contract so currently on the june contract we're trading at 53 dollars and 83 cents so um at the minute i'm i'm sh i'm selling I'm selling the highs of, of crude of the current crude market, which on the front contract we're trading at fifty two dollars, but on on the forward contract we're trading fifty four dollars almost. It's almost a two dollar spread at the moment. That's quite a, a big difference. But you can see the point I'm trying to make. So when the contract gets rolled over with the with the with the back adjusted contract, it shows current infantry in the market where the 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 um the continuous contract doesn't show that because this contract expired but um the difference is is in the data i mean is the is the psychological reasons i mean unless you're like a hedge fund manager and you're and you're managing long positions i mean at a prop desk or an investment bank market making they are going to be worried more about the the actual the the physical price that you got traded that because that's more of a psychological level um rather than previous prices um for, for selling to clients but obviously if you're a longer term hedge fund manager and you're and you're rolling over continuous positions trying to keep your longer term um yearly monthly who knows what trades into the market then you're continuously f rolling your your positions over so when you're rolling your positions you want to be looking at the your inventory in the market and the inventory in the market so you're looking at a back adjusted contract so it just depends what what um what you want to do and what you're currently doing in your business structure and how you're managing your your positions and, and, and your business but from my perspective and from what I'm doing I mean um, I'm not I'm not rolling positions over um, over a longer term basis and I'm more interested in the psychological levels that got but that, that are holding on the spot price um, for psychological reasons I mean psychological reasons are very obvious. I mean, the high and the low are very obvious. But I mean, if you're using a back-adjusted uh, contract every month, the high and the lows are changing. I mean, it used to drive me crazy because I didn't actually fully understand this when I was trying to obviously do my top-down analysis. But every time I rolled over, the high and the low on the year would change, and and the monthly highs and lows would change, and the the value areas would change because of the the way that the contracts get spliced over, and it just gets it it got very confusing for me. So for for what I am doing for the for for, for what I am doing for my business and my trading, I am more worried about the psychological levels, um, past levels. I mean, you can see here that it's past high, and 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 vice versa. I mean, the lows that got put in. I mean, it's just. From what from my experience, I, I I would rather keep the psychological level. I I know that the that the um that this inventory is dead in the market. That's not there anymore, and I and I know that. But I still want to see the distribution bell curves in these areas from previous distributions, and um and I know where the current inventory is coming in into the new front contract. But like I said, more importantly, I'm I'm worried about the psychological um, levels that have been have been put into place here so just for instance i mean when when we roll over the next i'm um, going into the end of this week i mean currently the the next the the front price is trading at 54 dollars a barrel which is all the way up here so it's gonna be quite a big um quite a big uh spread at the minute um so it'd be, it'd be funny to see it'd be interesting to see if we if we tighten that up into the end of the week but anyway you're seeing the point i'm trying to make with the different different data types and um and uh and there is no right or wrong way and the same thing is you've got the date rule back adjusted and then you've got the volume based rollover back adjusted so it just depends on on how you want to manipulate and splice the data for the futures contract but um for the spot prices i mean this is the this is for the spot price i am i am using the spot price data rather than the back adjusted i used to use the back adjusted but um so, but if you are using the back adjusted then obviously for for what I would advise to do is is to keep the continuous contract for um, your monthly, yearly, and weekly, and possibly even your daily bar analysis. I mean, for for instance, your daily. I mean, depending on what you want to do, I'll, you could argue for the daily to use the back adjusted or the front uh, or, the, or the continuous contract. Sorry, but um, and then you could run all your all your volume analysis and all of your VWAP, um, all your VWAPs off of the off of the. Um, 
the back adjusted contracts. So using the, 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 the continuous contracts for your higher time frames, so you're getting the correct psychological highs and lows for the years, months and weeks. And then you can use your, um, your back adjusted splice data to see the current inventory for volume analysis and for the VWAPs. But again, for what I'm doing and for my own reasons, um, I'm using the, the continuous contract for for everything. It just makes a lot more sense and it makes my life easier, my visualization easier and my levels that I trade off of um, a lot easier. <coughs> Obviously crude is a bit of a nightmare because it rolls over every month. I mean equities roll over every three months and gold has got a bit of a funny rollover and uh, and obviously the forex you're trading off of the um, off of the forex spot prices anyway, and not off of the back adjusted data. So, anyway, um, I hope that wasn't too confusing, and you can see um, roughly what uh, happens on the rollover and how the data is manipulated. But there is a ton of information and out there and documents better um, explaining it than what I have done here that would um, that will help you if uh, if you're still having troubles understanding. Um, the data issues um, with futures contract splicing and as usual uh, if you do have any questions I mean do not hesitate to uh, to email me or um, contact me uh, via the forum or for, by a personal message uh, anyway take care and goodbye